Hello, and welcome to A Slice of Pie, the semi-weekly news show that we do on this channel. How's everybody doing this week? I have been really productive, even though I've been pretty much working every single day. You see, not only did we build a friend of mine, since I've known since high school, a PC, but we also upgraded Nova. In fact, Nova now has a Ryzen 9 in it, which uh, is actually helping a lot with video editing and production. There are actually a ton of videos coming out, and I'm unfortunately not going to be able to list them all off, as some of those projects have to remain secret, as somebody who is going to benefit from one of them is currently asleep. I don't want to say it too loudly. So, we'll keep this one a secret, because she really doesn't watch the videos all that often. Other than that, though, there are videos about this chair that's mysteriously looming in the background and other things. Uh, God, there's so much happening right now. Uh, it's it's amazing, but it's again, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for delivery and stuff to arrive. That being said, next week we have a pack schedule with lots on it. I'm actually gonna start with something that I added kind of last minute. You see, I have recently watched a video by the YouTube channel Hardware Unbox. There are a bunch of Aussie YouTubers. They do a bunch of in-depth, deep dive content on various computer parts. And something that they did recently was a comparison between the uh, RX 5700 XT and the 2060 Super because they're actually very close in price. Just recently though, they actually did a video that compared the 2070 and the 2070 Super to the 5700 XT. And much like I said in my review of that card, with an overclock, the 5700 XT comes really close to the 2070 Super, to the point that I believe it was only a 7% margin of gain on average per FPS for the NVIDIA card, which 7% for like 150 to $200 more is not worth it at all. So I am gonna put a link down into that video because I thought it was interesting. Um, that being said though, there is an argument for NVIDIA cards. Um, if you want the ray tracing, if you want the DLSS, uh, that's your only option right now. So we'll wait for Big Navi on the AMD side, but on the NVIDIA side, we do have those features which could add value if that's what you're looking for. Speaking of benchmarking, guess what's coming back? Crisis. They are remastering the original Crisis and I have a bit of faith that this is going to become the Can It Run Crisis Meme 2.0 because Crytek in the announcement video for it literally has a bunch of comments of people saying, do you still run Crisis as a benchmark type thing? So they're going to be making the original Crisis again with the same intent that they did when they made it originally, which is to be like the bleeding edge of technology. Um, Crytek actually has made a lot of strides when it comes to creating a software-based ray tracing that can be done on all GPUs, so I do suspect that we're going to see that implemented into the new Crisis, which could make it really hard to run. Intel's Ghost Canyon Nux have started to enter the hands of influencers, and it looks okay. It looks pretty much the exact same as it did at CES. It looked like a finished product back then. It's still running a Intel integrated laptop chip that is of the 9 series variant. I believe you can get different SKUs with different processors. And you might even be able to get their new 10th gen mobile processor in there. Granted, their 10th gen is really just their 9th gen just with more juice shoved through it. So I'm actually more interested to see when someone builds the triple threat PC. Uh, personally, I can't afford it, which is why I'm just letting that one out. But uh, someone who gets like, say, a Fantex, um, it's the 718 or something like that. Now, it's not the Enthu Pro, uh, they, they changed the name, or the Lux, it used to be the Lux. Either way, building a micro ATX, a mini ITX and a NUC PC, and that could be pretty awesome. You might actually be able to do full ATX and then like just use the floating card slots. Again, I could see 
an awesome build out of that. And then you could even think take a, like a Raspberry Pi and like stick it in like that huge open space off to the side of your air cooling and then like put a screen on it and hey, I, I if I had the money to make that video, I would make it. Speaking of NUCs though, have you ever noticed that AMD doesn't have their own NUC variant? In fact, there have actually been very few AMD small form factor PCs. Well, a new report suggests that it might be that Intel's actually stifling that innovation. In fact, Intel might be paying good money to prevent AMD NUCs from existing. Part of it, of course, was AMD did not have a compelling mobile processor until now, but if I'm, if this report is to be believed, there's a good chance that Intel is paying money to prevent the development of AMD based NUCs. Rumor has it though, and well, I'm not really surprised, that B450 motherboards, and B550 motherboards will be completely compatible with Ryzen 4th gen. Now 550 hasn't even come out yet, so I'm very much in the boat of believing that if it does come out, it's going to come with the ability to use Ryzen 4000. That being said, the fact that 450 still counts is pretty nice, and I believe every X470, X570 board will also be compatible uh, according to this rumor. Hey, you know the GT710, that like really low powered GPU that NVIDIA puts out and still somewhat sells? Well, Asus has updated it with more HDMI ports. Now the purpose of this card is to be a basic video out. You take a pretty beefy processor and you run H.26 encoding through it, and then you just display out through that card. It really has no processing whatsoever. So it's actually completely passive, which is, not bad, and I've seen people play some games on it, um, kind of as a joke, but digressing a little bit, it's kind of cool that it's being updated and could be used in more applications with that many HDMI ports. I could see multi-screen streams, like so, how sports bars work, where they have like a bunch of TVs running at the same time. That would make sense to hook that into that kind of a card, and I'm sure you can run multiple because it's for a business application. EVGA though is releasing the 2070 Super KO and the 2080 Super KO. Both cards are actually not too bad in price. They are cut down a little bit, not processing wise, but in features and using a cheaper cooler so that EVGA can sell them at a reasonable price. That being said, they are still more expensive than the 5700 XT, which I almost wonder if this whole reaction is in light of the fact that the 2070 Super and the 5700 XT are within a 7% margin. Minecraft now has ray tracing and it looks glorious. It looks like all those Minecraft cinematics that came out around like 2015 God, I feel old when I talk about that, but still, it, it looks good. Does anybody else remember Egg Plays Minecraft? Like, whatever happened to that channel? A new Nintendo Switch might be coming out soon. And I'm excited about this for a couple reasons, because from the skew, it looks like it has something to do with dual screen functionality, because it actually has a very similar skew to DS. Now, speculation on my part is that it's going to be a sort of Wii U spiritual successor kind of thing. It's gonna keep the Switch naming and it's going to keep the Switch functionality, but instead of having a handheld that is essentially moving from room to room and being powered, it's going to be a more powerful console that sits on the, the actual console area and a tablet that you could switch to and stream to as an independent stream. Um, I don't know why I feel like that is the direction they're gonna go. And there's just something in my gut that says like, they have the Switch Lite, which is a portable only. They have the Switch, which is both. Now, if they make something else, it should be a home console that could switch either to those portables or to a separate device, or even if they really, really wanted to go like completely like the cheapest way possible, make a controller for the phone, or I mean, Razer literally has one and you can stream directly to it. That would literally be the cheapest way you could do it and probably the easiest way you could do it. Either way, um, new Switch, 
skew spotted. We don't know what it is yet, and we might or might not see it at the end of the year. Razor is releasing Pokemon earbuds, and they look amazing. They come in a Pokeball case. They're wireless, they are their wireless hammerheads. They are yellow, and they got a Pikachu butt on it. And it's adorable, and I want it. That's it, that's the whole story. I want it, I will get it once it comes out. All right, and a final story to wrap up on. ZeniMax Online, which is the parent company of Bethesda, actually runs and develops ESO. So Elder Scrolls Online is a Bethesda property that is owned by ZeniMax, and ZeniMax Online makes the game and updates the game. Cool, cool. ZeniMax actually made a blog post talking about where they're at with the current DLC. Now, the newest DLC is slated to come out in May for the PC and June for the consoles. The reason that they have a PC lead-in is because the game is actually developed for the PC first and then ported to consoles afterward. And they also do a little bit of bug testing on the PC side. I personally am one of the many people who have access to the PTR, um, or actually it's the public test server. Essentially, I've been helping them test this game since it came out, and never before have I seen a post so honest, really. Like, no jargon, nothing, just honest. They had to delay the DLC by at least a week. Due to the COVID-19, they stated they're working at home, they have resources, it's going smooth, but they unfortunately had to delay it by a week. And it was just a very interesting moment of vulnerability, so I'm going to link down to the blog post because as somebody who's trying to develop my very own video game with the help of my friends, it is not easy at all. And I could imagine like something like this being devastating if we were actually working in a studio. All right, and that wraps it up for us today. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video, you can leave a like, comment, subscribe. I do this video once every two weeks. And yeah, we got more content coming your way very soon. So thank you guys again, Wolfie.